What's up, bro? What are we talking about today? Our 100th episode. Wow. We did it. It's the end of the year. It's December 2023. Yep. So today we are sharing what 100 episodes feels like. Yep. And then what's the plan for 2024? Yeah. Because you've got to have a plan, right? I guess. <laughs> We've drawn this, we've we've arrived at some conclusions that happen to uh, manifest a change for 2024. Yep. One of those being something that our mother told us, which we'll share. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what we're talking about today. Today we're going to talk about um, what next year looks like, what we plan to do, what we hope to do, and uh, what that's going to look like for our FocusCast fans. Our FocusCast fan. That's right. It's fans. <laughs> There's know. three of them. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just messing. We're speaking from first person. Yeah. Whether whether it's ten fans or a million fans, at least it still it's serve. It's like it's one person. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So let's dig in. Let's do it. Jonathan Noel. And I'm Brian Noel. This is the Focus Cast. Where we help you remove distractions. Increase focus. So you can live a life with intention. <coughs> nice. A little coffee today. It's all right. So yeah, uh, last couple of episodes we talked about um, what it's life, what it's like to have 100 episodes or 99 episodes. We mm-hmm. talked about stats. Yep. Um, we talked about investment. We talked about what we're doing. We've talked about a lot of things this year. Yeah. So now we're talking about some implementations, maybe some things we want to switch up, a yeah. little bit of a new direction. Yeah. How we want to maybe niche, niche, niche down. Niche down. <laughs> and some of the things that we will not say. Right. In 2024. Right. So first, let's let's start there. So we're gonna we're gonna break this episode. It's gonna be a quick episode, but let's talk about um, a funny story in which. Um, the words we will not say in 2024, and then we'll talk about uh, what it's going to look like in 2024 and what we hope to do, right? What's the, what, what the goal is. So why don't you share with us a little story, yeah. Jonathan, about what words we are not going to say in 2024 and why. So I was calling our mom. Because <laughs> we're brothers. Because we're brothers. And then uh, just for some random question, maybe about Thanksgiving, I don't know. But um, she was like... She had a bone to pick. <laughs> oh, she had a bone to pick. She had a bone to pick because she listened to one of our episodes and she said that she counted the, like 37 cuss words. And I think that was, I'm not even sure if that was between both of us. That may have been just bet- just me. That was just you because she told me also. That was just yours. Okay, 37 for me and like, t- what, 20-something for Brian? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she said it was very frustrating for her. <laughs> and what's funny is if you got to know her mom... You know, some people have moms that, like, interject themselves toxically in your life forever, and they don't stop. Yeah. Our mom is the opposite of that. Right. Like, this, for our mom to give an opinion about something that we are doing, like, I think that's the first opinion that she's given me about something that we're doing since I lived at home. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> this is not, like, you know, this isn't, like, you know, normal. Right. So for her to say it. Right, exactly. It's not normal. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's not trying to micromanage us. No, at, no. At all. She, that whole let the bird go thing, fly yeah, out of the yeah, nest. We like, really she left. did that really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was a pro at that. She released us 100%. And, and, um, <laughs> and, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, it's probably pretty excessive. And I go listen to the episode and. It was excessive, obviously, 37 cuss words, a lot of them being the F word. Not like hell. Yeah, no. An ass. No. We're talking straight to the F bombs. Straight to the F bombs. Just dropping them. Nonstop. Like it's a cluster cluster strike or something. <laughs> like, we're, <laughs> like we're in a war zone. Like we're getting paid. Yeah. For every time we say it. Exactly. Um, so then I was talking to, uh, I do some consultants, consulting work for one of our mom's friends who is an executive director of a nonprofit. And she 
mentioned the same thing. She was like, yeah, I was talking to her mom. And, I was, and then I brought up the cussing thing. And she's like, yeah, you know, we were talking about that. Yeah. So my mom and her friend were talking about our podcast and how we cuss too much at an event. And they, they basically <laughs> can't listen to it. Yeah, they can't listen to it. <laughs> so we're losing the middle-aged... Upper middle-aged. Upper middle-aged women category <laughs> who don't want to listen to young dudes say the F word <laughs> over and over. Yeah, so... <laughs> You know what? And and sound like degenerates. Yeah. So we've decided that we're not going to double down. Yeah, we're not going to double down on degeneracy. <laughs> and we're going to, you know, not cuss. I think now it's fun. It's a fun game. Like, like. Oh, gosh, I've already wanted to say the F word like 12 times. <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> the F word. Wow. <laughs> this just sounds like middle school. I know. We should have a jar. And then anytime someone says it, they got to drop five bucks in there. And then that way, that's pay, that's our lunch, yeah. lunch money. We had to do that to one of our friends because he was doing too many abbreviations. <laughs> so we made an abbreviation jar. Oh, my gosh. Did he, he was, call it the AJ? He was just getting... He <laughs> had to put money out. right in. He's like, I love my abbreves. <laughs> so, Oh, yeah. my gosh. <laughs> I love my abbreves. Money in the jar! So we're also... We want to salvage some episodes. Yeah. Um, we're not going to keep them all. Yeah. So we're going through tightening them up, you know, uh, snipping out the audio for f bombs and shit, and then we're leaving out hell and damn. I took out the bitches. Yeah, I took so, out that too. So we're only. I feel like we're only leaving hell and damn. Yeah. And ass. I which we I, never say those because we're not in middle school. Yeah. So we're, we're adults. <laughs> we're adults. We we use adult cuss words. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, we're picking episodes, cleaning those up for to you know put those into the next phase yeah. of the podcast, and then we're gonna move into a new format. Yeah, that Brian was spearheaded. Yeah, so I think um, the number one goal, one one of the things that when I read about you know how to grow a podcast and all that kind of stuff. Um, because based on our stats last episode, uh, we've got a consistent set of downloads after 100 episodes, but there's definitely no consistent growth. Right. Um, so they just talk about you got to you got to niche down, you got to niche down, you got to talk to a very specific audience and then grow from there. So a passion of mine is to serve founders. I mean, I've been a facilitator and a consultant for founders. Um, yeah. And honestly, my core belief is like, like, and when I say small business, I mean like five to 20 million. According to the IRS, a small business is 500 employees or less. Wow. I'm not talking about just startups or like one person shows. I'm talking about like a five, 10, $15 million business, small business. Um, but I think founders, like they, their employees trust them. Yeah. Um, their attitude really dictates the culture. Um, a lot of small businesses give back to their community. Yeah. And they're very involved in their community. Um, you know, you get the hundred thousand dollars from like Bank of America, you know, for some thing in Atlanta, but a hundred thousand dollars bank. It's like, we gave $20 million and we're, you know, a $12 billion company. Right. Um, that's not even pocket change. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the, um, 1% of the bank overdraft fees that they charge. Yeah. Um, but small businesses, you know, they, they participate, they're out there, you know, they're not just donating money, they're donating time and. And so, um, yeah, like on the boards, I mean, this is, this is happening everywhere, but like we go mountain biking and you'll see like the sign with the sponsors and donors for the trails Yeah, and you know, there's small business, local mm-hmm. businesses on there. Yeah. Just so, so we can mountain bike on the exactly. trail. I'm like, that's great. So our, our, our niche is going to be founder led companies mm. and we are going to talk directly to the founder. Now, um, I've been fortunate to serve founders through uh, consulting around brand storytelling and making that story true for a long time now. Yeah, uh, a couple of decades. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna deep dive. The goal is that a founder can listen to the podcast and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna take some nuggets, mm-hmm. some immediate application tools into their business. And then the other goal is that we help them. Um, just enjoy being a human, right. you know, work consumes you so much yeah. and, and there's a season for that, but sometimes that can just never end. And so yeah, I would love for a founder to listen to the podcast and go 
you know, take a weekend and focus on their family or focus on their breath or focus on exercise or whatever yeah. and take a break from their their company and then go in Monday with a new fresh spirit. And if we yeah. can if we can help inspire that, that would be incredible. Yeah. It's kind of like the forerunner gunner, the really the main point is to try and get people to want to go on adventure. Yeah. Just get outside. It's kind of the same thing. I mean so, yeah, take really a break. Is. Because of we talk about it, the diminishing returns yeah. of overworking. Yeah, I so think we're very overworked. You reach that point where you're less efficient, and yeah. it's like, wow, is this a, am I using my time properly? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So that's the goal. We got some some things that we want to um, skill sets that we want to increase. Yeah, and one of those is storytelling. Yeah. Uh, so we really want to pull from instead of just kind of getting some research and then speaking from our opinion of the research. And then a couple of uh, rabbit trails here and there about the government <laughs> and <laughs> all that yeah, stuff. Some government tangents. Yeah. So we, going back and listening to episodes from the past hundred episodes, we we go on some some anti-government rants. But um, <laughs> but as any true entrepreneur, yeah, podcast should. That's right. So we'll we'll focus on the art of storytelling and and just um, you know we've been reading and learning a lot this year, so pulling some of those incredible stories that are yeah. almost timeless out and applying those. And um, so yeah. that'll be a goal yeah. and a skill set. To It'll be fun to look for random applicable stories. Yeah, 100%. So I would love the end of the year to be able to just in conversation be someone who really tells stories almost in every conversation. Yeah. Like I, I just want to be that kind of person. I mean, people who tell badass stories – they're amazing. Everyone shuts up. Everyone, exactly. And everyone loves it. Yeah. And it just adds to the whole, yeah. the whole experience. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking for. And it's like we've been a, we've been a written language, you know, human culture yeah. for just a small piece of our entire history. Storytelling. Yeah, it's kind of an is, art. It's an art. And it's been, it's, yeah. it was the primary source of communication transfer for a yeah. long time. And I'm not practicing it. But I want to. That yeah. sounds great. I want to be able to tell cool stories and yeah. make it engaging and mm-hmm. not just like a where you say like and um and mm, <laughs> you know forty times because you should. <laughs> yeah. You're like wait, what happened with? I think I went to, you know. Yeah. I want to knock out some yeah. dirt nasty. <laughs> dirt <laughs> nasty stories. No, like, some epic. Yeah. Like engaging stories. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be a skill set that we will perfect in this next year. Um, and then we're going to go just kill some of the bad episodes. Not really bad episodes, but just less less punchy. Yeah. Um, and so we'll go from episode 100 to episode 11 <laughs> or 12 or however many we decide to keep in post. Yep. Um, so it's definitely like a pretty holistic refresh. Yeah. So that way as founders come in, you know, we want to we kind of want to handpick some of the episodes that we think would be very valuable for founders and then um and then build on that yeah i think the biggest insight for me was i was you know going into 2024 you know i'm an entrepreneur plenty of ideas plenty of cool stuff to try and do and i was like man how many founders do i have in my phone Mm. Mm -hmm. and i was just scrolling through and there was like two and i was like i want 24 that's my first goal now i like that that's a great goal so because Let's be real. It's a great network of people to have. Yeah. You got adventurous people there. Yeah. You know, you just great wisdom, applying, you know, mm-hmm. hard lessons every day. Yep. Um, you know, founders are pretty cool. They're special. So um, by the end of next year, I want to have 24 founders that I can just call at any moment and ask a question. That's, that's really yeah. the goal. So if whether the audience is 1,000 or 10,000, but if or it's two, if I have 24 founders in my phone that I can call and ask a question, it'll be worth it. Nice. For me personally. Yeah, and then for me, secondary through you. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, uh, no it's, it's a good community to yeah. build because pretty much everyone has ideas. Maybe you don't want to be like the entrepreneur who's works 80 hours a week and that's fine yeah. but like people if you have you want to build something if you have an idea it's nice to have people you can reference and contact and yeah. ask questions yeah because the internet is just it's great it's a great tool but there's so much information yeah 
you know, just search entrepreneur in, in YouTube and tell me what happens. Yeah. You'll have 20 years worth of videos pop up yeah. that just make you feel like your head spinning. Yeah. So. And, and so much of that space now online it's kind are of these tainted. like AI, you know, like, yep. you know, just do this and you'll make $200,000 a month on, you know, it's just so much of that, like, like making it sound like a silver bullet. Yeah, exactly. And true founders know that it's no silver bullet. It's, it's a healthy mix right. of just learning and growing exactly. and learning and growing and stepping up and stepping back. And it's, it's very human in the real world. Um, so to be able to call a human. <laughs> You're like, what was your experience? Yeah. I'm experiencing this. Yeah. What was yours? <laughs> what was your experience? Yeah. It just feels much better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. As people have done it, if they've already done it several times, they can probably save you some time. Yeah. And energy. Yeah. With, I, some, with advice. I learned this in college when I, um, you know, Rate My Professor came out mm -hmm. later for me in college. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you who don't know, Rate My Professor is you go online and see what everyone says about a professor. So yep. you know to take that professor or not. Mm -hmm. So I worked full time. So I knew I could, I didn't have capacity to take a professor that only 20% of the class would pass. Right. I just didn't. I was going doing three classes at a time and working full time. So I just didn't have capacity for that. So I use Rate My Professor uh, purely for that. If the overwhelming feedback was that only a few people are going to graduate yep. this class, I was like, I'm not taking that class, That's especially if it's not in a subject that I cared about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like history, world history, um, American history. Um, yeah. So, so anyway, but before that. I would just go to, when I was a freshman, I would just go to second semester freshmen or first year sophomores and be like, what, what teacher should I take? And they'll be like, well, don't take this. Mm. And um, because having that person who's just gone through what you're about to go through gives you the best insight. Yeah. And we love Gary V and, you know, Rick, uh, what's his name? Um, who's the... Who's the shark that owns the basketball Cuban. team? Yeah, Cuban. Mark Cuban. All those guys are brilliant. And, and they give really solid advice, but their situational environment is that of a billion-dollar company. Yeah, it's, it's different. Or established. You know, they're yeah. decades into it. So And it gets hazy. It gets hazy. I imagine. Not that I'm saying I know specifically about entrepreneur experience, but yeah. anything. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I went through that 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well. Yeah. That's different than talking to the person who just did it six months ago. Yeah. And like, it's like if you're about to have your first kid and you talk to someone who's got nine kids, <laughs> they're going to be like, oh, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're at the point to where like their house manages themselves. They yeah. got like seven little businesses. <laughs> yeah. Like a little factory going on in their house, you know? So, yeah. So it's just, yeah, to have someone who just went through that or just solved that problem, they understand the nuance. They remember the nuances. Yes. Yes. Um, and so that's. That's the goal is, you know, as um, for me launching the footwear company and, um, you know, working on all this content stuff and creative stuff to, round, to surround ourselves with founders and creatives. Um, you know, this one guy reached out on Instagram with one of the posts I did and he's a creative and I was like, we should hang out. And he's like, yeah, that'd be cool. And I'm like, I just want more creative people around me. Yeah. So to hang out with founders and creatives next year, it's like crazy drone flyers and People that just sit in a studio all day and obsess over these cool, like, graphic yeah. type, you know, B-roll or footage and stuff like that. Like, I just want to immerse myself with those types. Yeah, build the community. Yeah. Yeah, so format-wise, um, <coughs> we're going to take it all down. Mm -hmm. It's all going down. Yeah. Um, and then... I don't really know how that works for like all of the TikTok videos. Um, I mean, there was a time when we were uploading four TikTok videos a day. I think I deleted some of those, but a decent amount is going to be deleted. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometime mid-January, I'm not even worried about it. Mm -hmm. Sometime in January. Yeah. Um, we're going to launch uh, or release the first phase three episode of the Focus Cast. And what we're thinking about doing, we'll see if we do it is, um, or if it changes or whatever, but what we're thinking about doing is uh, a Founders Day starter. Mm, so yeah. five minutes or less on the way to work, um, a key principle they can take into their company that day. And um, it's going to be broken down into the themes. So we're going to hit a theme a month 
<coughs> break that theme down into weeks mm -hmm. and then hit a component, an element of that every day. So I think we're going to start with um, brand storytelling, telling a uh, story, mm -hmm. making sure that your brand tells a clear and compelling story that produces a call to action. Mm. <laughs> um, so we'll break that down. What does it mean to have a good story? Um, you know, for us wanting to learn the power of storytelling, and yeah. then I've consulted brands for 20, 50, like 15 years now on brand storytelling. Yeah. So we're going to break down the power of strong brand storytelling. So, bro, does that mean part of our brand storytelling is telling stories? Yes. <laughs> so if we can't tell stories well. Yeah. What's <laughs> then how are we going to tell other people to tell their stories? Exactly. <laughs> So that'll be it. I know uh, I'm excited to talk about things like delegation. Yeah, uh, delegation is a big component for founders. Trust when you when you delegate. A lot of times we don't delegate because we don't trust. Yeah, um, we've delegated. We've talked about this. We actually did an episode on delegation, and you delegated and you got burnt. Yep. So it's like then you pull it all back. Yep. Um, so the art of delegation. So we'll talk about things like that. Uh, but again, the goal is um, Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday. Eat five minutes on the way to work, and you're going to be able to walk in, you know, inspired with this little gym. And then another piece that we would love to do that I'm really excited about is a Friday, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 15, 20 minute, whatever, episode to prepare for the weekend. Yeah. You know, for a founder who worked really hard Monday through Friday, how do you reset yourself to prepare to go into two days of rest? Mm -hmm. How do you turn that off and be fully present with your family or fully present outside of your work persona. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, how you take a break, right? Um, the mind needs a break. Yeah. Like science will tell you. Um, yeah. You got you to gotta have a break. So uh, we would love to, uh, for a founder to just feel inspired to go into the weekend Mm -hmm. and work on some self-work and be present with their family or their right. friends. <laughs> because <coughs> what you said earlier, bro. Yeah. What you said earlier, basically creativity doesn't exist if there's fear. Not saying that founders are scared, but the point is, is in the car. if you reach points where you're getting overwhelmed, yeah. you might be kind of nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these things that kind of get in the way of creativity and yeah. just having a forward vision. Yeah, you know, we always hear the story of like, I thought of this in the shower. Yeah. You know, you're in a meeting, you're trying to be creative, you're forcing creative, and it's just not working, and then mm -hmm. like the, the idea pops in your head later. Yep. And that's because the, the brain, when it breaks, a different part of the brain is engaged because you're actually relaxed or you're walking or you're breathing, and then all of a sudden the answer comes up, right? Mm -hmm. So training the brain to, to step away from all of the things that the week brings, you know, mm. will be very healthy. The team will love you on Monday. Yeah, but not on Tuesday. <laughs> Less on Tuesday. <laughs> not very much on Friday, but no one cares about work on Friday anyway. <laughs> Everyone's just ready to go home. Yeah, exactly. In fact, <laughs> Friday shouldn't even be a work day. It really shouldn't. I don't think I've ever worked a Friday in my life. No, it's, it's totally not true, but... When I'm, um, when I'm a... When I have several employees for one of these companies, I'm pretty, I'm pretty determined that we'll have a four day work week. Yeah. Or half day Fridays if it's like, yeah. Or like work if you want to. Yeah. Because if people are showing up and not doing anything anyway, <coughs> I know, I mean, I'm, we've all seen it. Yeah. We've all seen it a lot, a lot. Friday rolls around. And it's like, yeah, everyone's Late. there in person, but Long nobody's there in mind. They're and, just talking. Yeah. Chatting it up. Two yeah. hour, yeah, 30 minutes late, one hour lunch, and they're out the door one hour early. <laughs> yeah. And if the boss is not in on oh, Friday, gosh. ain't nobody For doing anything. Forget about <laughs> it. Yep. I mean, it's water. It's, you might as well put out 30 water coolers. Just <laughs> this is what I, everyone's standing around talking. <laughs> and you got the few people that are like, oh, their identity is in their work. Yeah. So they're like, oh, no one works on Friday. I but I do. I do. Yeah. It's like, calm down, Bob. <laughs> calm down. Yep. Go home to your family. Yes. <laughs> it's not that important. Go play some golf. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, that's that's 2024. We'll see how we feel at the end of 2024. Yeah. And we'll be on 5.0, 6.0 yeah. version. 
Yeah, I'm, um, there's no, I'm not attached to anything. They say it takes about a year to find your voice, right? Yeah. We've been doing it for how long? Well, they say 100 episodes. Oh, 100 episodes. Yeah. All the we found our that, voice, and then we didn't like it, so we were going to delete every episode. <laughs> we had a 10% hit rate. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Right. We are honing in what we actually want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, and, I mean, again, we've said it in the last couple episodes, so but we'll say it again because this might be... Th- the only episode that's still uh, available after we delete the last two. Yeah. But um, talking about f- increasing focus for two years, 100 episodes. Has made us increase our focus. Yeah. So when I, and I, I'm, I'm surely I talked about this on the last episode, but doing the research and listening to podcasts like the Model Health Show specifically, yeah. shout out to my man, Sean Stevenson. Yeah. You learn a lot of information and it's great. Yeah. And... I don't regret it at all. It doesn't matter if we only have, what, 50 monthly listeners. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. My life has radically changed. Oh, gosh. Yeah. In the past 12 months. Radically changed. Yeah. In fact, everyone should start a health podcast, even if no one listens to it, because it's going to make you learn about health. Yeah. And and even for us, what's so beautiful about the subject of focus is it's mind-body. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time talking about the mind and yep. the traps yeah. And the trauma and the hiccups and the pains and the fear and the worry and the anxiety. The we human spent, element. The human element. We spent a lot of time researching and discussing. And there's the podcast, but then there's all the conversations we have around the podcast. Yes. Um, so, yeah, to your point, I mean, we literally just had a journal. More or less. The podcast is, is has been a journal for us for two years. Yeah. And so now looking back, it's like completely different perspective in life. Yeah. Significant healing. Mm-hmm. Most through definitely. Through the therapy work and all that stuff. Yeah, we used to get drunk. Yeah. When we recorded. Yeah. I can honestly... Every time. Like, check this out. Okay, let's, let's hear it, bro. So a year, two years ago, mm-hmm. right? I'm a good dad. Yeah, for and I sure. know I'm a good dad. Yeah, I don't need anyone to tell me that. Of course not. Um, but don't even let someone tell you you're a good father. Yeah, they don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me what I know. Don't tell me what I know. Um, uh, but a couple of years ago, um, go listen to the episode on disassociation. That one will still live. But I had a manager in my head, yeah, controlling my life for and how long? Since I was five. Okay. Maybe eight. For context. Probably really nine. Yeah. Because um, that's when the brain starts. Um, but the manager was like, you need to be a good dad. You need to be a good dad. You need to be a good dad. You need to be present. Don't look at your phone. Don't do this. Don't get angry. Da, 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 da. So I was a good dad. I managed my way to be a good dad. Mm, mm-hmm. Here I am. And I used to sit and think about entrepreneurialism and ideas and was it going to work? And is my, am I good enough? And am I qualified enough? And I used to just literally, the brain was just constantly to the point to where I drank a couple beers every single day just to shut it up. Yeah. And that was the pattern for like the last decade with every day after work. And then the, the family would go to bed and I would work for two or three hours every single night. Mm. I'd have my day job and then my night job, just whatever I wanted to work on. Yeah. So now I can go home and I can sit with my kids and play trains yeah and literally not think about anything else it's a completely different existence completely different yeah completely yeah (laughs) yeah so that's that's what has happened i mean there's something beautiful about just sitting there and playing with some kids toys and like your your head being empty yes and really thinking about because even when I'm hanging out, I don't have kids, but the nieces and nephews, and I'm yeah. like, I'll build a train. Yeah. I don't care. It's really fun. This is fun. It's fun. And you're just kind of like, your head's empty. Yeah. Like, if you really hold that space like you're a kid again. Yeah. And you're like, how can I, can I do a bridge on the track? <laughs> <laughs> how many loops can I put? Yes. So yeah, it's a completely different experience. Yeah. One is your trying to bend yourself over, force yourself to be a... Yeah. As you're telling yourself, you got to be a good dad. Yeah. 
Don't be like a, you're not a degenerate. Don't be a loser. And then one, you just exist. Yeah, now I'm just here. Yeah. Call me a good dad. Call me a bad dad. I don't care. And kids respond to that. Oh, my they, gosh. They know when you're just existing and you're hanging out with them. Yes. Or when you're just kind of half, not saying you were half fascinated, but when your mind is elsewhere. Yeah. They know. If I'm sitting there anxious about not being good enough. Yeah. Or anxious about something that I'm working on or something that I want to work on that yeah. I'm not working on because I don't have the money, I don't have the resources, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. They feel that. They feel that I'm not present. Mm-hmm. But now. You just sit there. When I walk in, my littlest just pats the floor. And that's him because he doesn't talk. He signs. He talks through signing and noises. Yeah. But he just pats the floor, and that's him telling me, I want you to come sit with me and play with me. <laughs> that's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> He's just he like, sat me down in the chair <laughs> the last time I was over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He'll let you know what he wants. He's like, you sit here. <laughs> we watch this, and we hang out. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, okay. And you don't move unless you get to use the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to look back at your face to make sure you're watching what I'm watching <laughs> every 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, it's funny. big. Like, present with my wife, present here in the work, Yeah, present in conversations. Like, when I go to these meetups and stuff out in the, out in wow. the professional world, yeah. you know, I'm not in the room like, do they approve me? I got to talk to this person. Yeah. I got to meet that person. I got to close a deal. I got to do this. Blah, 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 blah. I just walk in. And if someone wants to talk to me, I just talk to them. And if no yeah. one wants to talk to me, I'll just sit there and eat the snack that they have available and I'll leave. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. While all the big wigs are over there talking, I'm just hanging out with the, the people serving food. So no one else wanted to talk to me. So I'll talk to this nice person over here. Yeah. Dishing out plates. Yeah. What do they got going on? They're probably starting something. How are they doing? They probably got multiple projects. That's right. Yep. So, anyway, so yeah, a year of uh, two years of talking about focus, and now I don't even have to sit here and think how am I going to increase focus. It's just already. I'm just there. You just we made it. <laughs> we made it to maximum focus. Yeah, I'm not even focused. I'm so focused. I'm so focused. I don't have to focus on being focused. Anymore. Yeah, exactly. You just go. I got to wake up, take a cold plunge, do forty burpees, read thirty minutes of my time stuff and then I got to do this I got to do this I got to do this and then I'm going to get to work and I'm going to be so focused and I'm going to have a clock and I'm going to have my chrome extensions and my phone extensions I'm going to do my juice thing and yada 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 I'm going to set up this infrastructure and then I'm going to teach a class on it on how to how to blah, 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 blah. I was like <laughs> it's like is this a, a focus class or a manic yeah how to be manic class yeah how to how to maintain manic <laughs> yeah ma- ma- <laughs> Manic maintained. It's like, as an entrepreneur, what's so funny is like, as an entrepreneur, yeah, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the person, the manic. No. I, I want to be like the monk in business. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have to have a crazy exercise routine in the morning, but just like a little movement. Yeah. You know, a little stretching, a little something, my, yeah. my tea. It's nothing crazy. Yeah. You know, a little bit of breathing. Yeah. You're pretty much good to go. Good to go. Cold showers do help. Yeah. We've been on the game for a while. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying everyone should. You but do whatever you really want. should try it. At least try it. <laughs> but it's had a positive effect on my life. Yeah, me too. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm addicted to it now. Yeah, so it's been, uh, it's been pretty fun. So that's exciting. Um, so, yeah, we'll take everything that we've learned and throw it into the next phase and see what happens. Yeah. A good book. Because, real quick, yeah. we, didn't, we haven't even mentioned this yet. Consolidation from large businesses. Yeah. From mega corporations. Yeah. That's what makes founders so cool. Yeah. You know, starting small businesses is an important thing. Yeah. Because we don't need to only have one option from the mega, mega corp no. international. No. I don't want that. Yeah, I, I mean, don't want Amazon to be the only company selling food, delivering it, meds. and like in meds and all this stuff. Because then it's like it's too much. It's too much control. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to talk about that because you're right, we didn't talk about. I can't believe we haven't talked about the government or big why? companies yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, founders, yes, yeah. yeah, why founders? Why founders? Great. Um, so, you know, we've heard it from our politicians: middle class, middle class, middle class. Mm-hmm. We're, we're slipping into 
an environment where, in my opinion, the founder, the middle class founder, is one of the most attacked persons mm. just through our tax yeah. codes, um, money, accessibility, yep. um, technology as barriers to entry, barriers to entry, laws written to specifically make it harder for yep. newer businesses. Yep. Looking like you at you, medical industry. <laughs> You know, like when, um, when you were trying to start the lab, yeah. the lab. Oh, yeah. Lobbyists are good. One of the strategies for big business to maintain market share is to have lobbyists pass laws that makes it more difficult for barriers to entry. Yeah. Blood sucking lobbyists do serve a purpose for the billionaires. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it's it's all goes back to just protecting. Um, why wouldn't I hire if I'm a big company, a lobbyist yeah. to go in? I mean, when you're looking at it strictly as an entity. Yeah. And an entity wants to survive. Yeah. You know, it is a collection of humans who have a vested interest in that continuing. Yeah. So, yeah, of course there's going to be lobbyists. Yeah, and you can... you can. Of course they're going to bribe the politicians or yeah. whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. That's just natural. Yeah. But back to the founder, um, like we said before, yeah, I, think, I think there's a lot against them. You know, I think it's just diff. It's a lot of work mm -hmm. to maintain a small business in our current infrastructure. Um, so I have a lot of empathy for founders around that. I think they're heroes. Um, and like we said before, they are anchors in the community. It's more connected. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so human to human in mm -hmm. our community. Um, so that's why I really want to serve founders. Nice. Yeah. We probably should have started there. Probably. Oh, well. We'll end it there. We'll end it there. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Sweet.